Well, it's a Sunday night, and it's uh, fairly late. We had a good day today. Um, I spoke in the little church that I've been attending for the last three weeks. This church has no power. Um, the man comes and brings a generator and plugs it up. And he's done it for 25 years. Can you believe that? It's really amazing. Just a very sweet uh, fellowship. Not a lot of people there. A lot of people don't want to drive three and a half miles down a forest road to get to the little church that almost looks like a little cabin. But uh, I've been very impressed in what I see there. The minister this morning had an ear issue, and uh, he wanted me to take the lead in doing the message, and so I had a message that I had used some scriptures in back several years ago when there was a little 11-year-old boy that got saved in this very message. I'm just going to read to you. A little bit of the note that I have just to keep it in you know under time the title of the message was what do you have when you have Jesus well the first thing you have is a change you have a change you have a difference second Corinthians 5 17 talks about that all things are made new um, you have a testimony Hebrews 11 and verse 5 talked about any having this testimony that he pleased God. You're unashamed. Romans 1 and verse 16 talks about I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Romans 10 1 talks about new desires. Remember that verse in the Bible? The one thing I desire is the is the things of God more than anything else. Our desires is going to be made new. You know what else you're going to have? You're going to have new speech. I'm glad that when the Lord saved my soul, that he gave me a new speech. You know, I'm very honored that he would change my speech. I know a lot of people get into the um, charismatic um, style and I'm not here to down anybody it's not my business to down anybody but I wouldn't trade the new speech I have for any unknown language at all I wouldn't ever give what I have up you know what else you're going to have if you really have been changed and you or born again and the Christian needs to have these things, you're going to have concern for the lost. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11, I believe, it talked about that he come to seek and to save that which is lost. You know, another thing you're going to have, you're going to want to desire genuine worship. I'm not talking about flim flam. There's enough places that's got all kinds of flim flam. You can get big crowds. You can even get smoke machines and blue lights and red lights. And you know what? The Bible says to come out from the, from the world and be a separated people. I believe that's really what he's talking about in genuine worship. You know, genuine worship is defined in John 4 and 24. And that verse says that you serve me in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. And ye that serve me must serve me in spirit and in truth. You know, Colossians 1 and verse 10 talks about pleasing the Lord. How many people is interested in pleasing the Lord? I think that scripture uses the word all-pleasing. A lot of times we want just 
40% pleasing. Maybe on a good Sunday, maybe 50 or 60% pleasing. But Lord, don't ask me. Don't ask me for 100% pleasing of you. Don't ask me to go that far. Evidence of fruit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's no limit. Do we have these ten attributes of Christ? If somebody had to quiz you today, do you have these attributes? Something to think about. Thank y'all for listening. Appreciate it.